Now, I think you deserve a lot of credit, the Donald told the Maybot this week, exactly for what he didn't specify. The Maybot begins her journey to the political knacker's yard when she steps down as Tory leader tomorrow. She'll be gone as Prime Minister and back to being Mrs May of Maidenhead before July is out. After three years, Brexit remains undelivered. Her leadership uh, under it, the Tories have lost their majority in the Commons and fought like rats in a sack. She's presided over their worst ever electoral pummeling in last month's Eurovote. And tonight they face the prospect of being an also ran in the Peterborough by-election. Until now, a Tory Labour marginal. Her fiercest critics say her only lasting legacy will be the destruction of the Conservative Party as we've known it. He is historian and political commentator Anthony Selden with his take of the week. Within hours, Theresa May's official tenure as leader of the Conservative Party will be over. She has probably had the least happy and the most fractious, certainly, premiership in modern British political history. And despite everything that she tried to do as a centre figure in the party to hold it together, the party is now more split than at any point in the last 100 years. But their slide in fortunes might not stop there. 9% in the European elections two weeks ago and polling 20% or below at the moment. This is unprecedented. One has to ask, will the Conservative Party, Britain's most successful political party ever, have its days numbered? I mean, after all, no political party lasts forever. The Tories are in desperate need of a grown-up, unifying figure to pull them out of the nosedive. Front-runner Boris Johnson says the party faces extinction if it doesn't leave the EU by the end of October. But there is no painless, easy way out of the EU on offer. There hasn't been a more ill-disciplined cabinet since the 19th century when the doctrine of collective responsibility first emerged. The disloyalty, the leaking, is unprecedented. The nastiness deeper than ever. The party that has dominated British politics for the last two centuries did so on just two simple principles, a complete hunger for office and a lack of ideology, a pragmatism. In the last few years, the party has apparently forgotten both. We're now moving into a new era in British politics, not class, but identity politics. It's been a hundred years since one of the two main parties was replaced. Could this be the moment when the Conservatives might be replaced? We never thought we'd see it happen, but it might. And uh, Anthony Selden joins us now. Welcome back to the programme, Anthony. You finished there by saying the Conservative Party could be replaced. By whom? Well, by somebody else on the right wing. You know, there's nothing that is immutable about parties. They, none of them last forever. This is the most uh, significant in history. Sure, but when the Liberals were replaced by Labour yep. over time... To the left. ..you could see to the left of them... Yeah. You could see that happening over time. It didn't happen yeah. overnight. Yeah. It didn't happen in a straight line. Sure. But it was clear, certainly looking yeah. back, what was happening. Yeah. They were the clearly identifiable replacement for the Liberals. Can you see one for the Tories? Well, you can see a similar process, can't you, of a nationalistic, ukip Brexit-type party emerging to the right, providing a unifying force for the the centre ground uh, for Labour, uh, working class, disillusioned, and, and for traditional Conservatives who find the idea of a, of a British flag, uh, uh, nationalistic dislike of, of uh, foreigners, providing a gel. And frankly, it is hard to see what the Conservative Party does stand for now. Michael, is it the end of days for the Conservative Party? Um, 
this is unknowable, uh, and I've talked to lots of Conservatives about it, and uh, on the whole they tend to say, uh, no, the Tory party always bounces back, but then if I take it a stage further, they acknowledge that because it's always bounced back in the past, yeah. there's not a reason to suppose that it will bounce back in the future. Um, I mean, considering the possibility of Brexit, the Brexit party or some such party replacing it, I think the chances of that are somewhat limited. I, I think if, if we don't manage to leave the European Union before the next general election, then obviously the Brexit party will do extremely well at the next general election, mm. get millions of votes and possibly even get some seats. Remember, they need many millions of votes to get seats under. Probably get enough seats to stop the Tories forming a government. Well, they might do, although I think they'll also take votes from Labour. I mean, this is where we came in. Remember, last time we thought UKIP was only going to take votes from the Tories, but actually it took from Labour as well. So this party will threaten both parties. Uh, Anthony has, has, has mentioned that. Uh, if we manage to get out of the European Union, then I don't think Brexit, the Brexit party will show at the next general election, as UKIP didn't show in the, get it right, 2017. Following the referendum. referendum. Following the referendum, because it was, there was no longer, apparently, a discussion. So I think a great deal uh, does depend on that. So how do you see this, looking from the other side of the aisle? Oh, I think actually it's important to look with caution because I think all traditional political parties at the moment are under a level of scrutiny and pressure. Mm. Um, I happen to, I'm a Democrat as well as a socialist. I think it is important that there are different political choices for people in our political system. Um, so I think it is important that people have the ability. I don't agree with the Conservatives, but I think certainly there are people who are Conservatives in this country. I also think I, I'm less convinced than you that the Brexit party is actually just about Brexit. One of the things I think they have been quite successful at doing, ironically, given who they are, is capturing this idea that they are the people against the elite. I mean, it couldn't be further from the truth, given that they're led by a man who stands in a gold lift with Donald Trump. But they have put forward an argument about our democracy. And actually, I think one of the things that all political parties are failing to deal with right now is people sense look I get it it's the plague on all your houses stuff it's the stuff you get on the doorstep which is it's not that people don't trust you they've never trusted mm. politicians that was the Hogarth pictures it's now well look even if I could trust you could you really do anything are you really effective and what the Brexit party I think are tapping into by not having a manifesto and not defining them is a simple sense that anything else could be better that worked clearly for them in the euro elections um, they didn't have a, a manifesto and it also worked because Brexit hadn't been delivered yeah. And I, can, I see what you're saying, that the failure to deliver Brexit, if it goes on and on and on, is an existential threat to the Tories. Yeah. But if a new Tory leader could deliver Brexit in some way or another, doesn't that threat of extinction then go away? Well, I think that you'll still see a different Conservative Party, and I think you'll see a different Labour Party, too. The Labour Party has to change from being the working class party. The country is changing. The classes no longer mean the same thing. Well, people Identity. don't vote on it's class lines, by and large. Now. Identity, absolutely. So, identi and these were the basis on which the parties were formed Labour and a hundred years Indeed. ago, when you had the mass franchise, the 1918 Act, the, the basing uh, the Labour Party on the trade union movement. You know that was the big change now. And a Brexit, you know, one election could pivot it. You just need in the first past the post system to get over that critical mass in the way that the SDP. Uh, liberals almost did in 1983, just a little bit more, and they'd have been over that that, that that threshold, and then that would have been Labour out of it. It could it could happen, and I think the Tories and Labour need to uh, take a deep breath of air and and reshape themselves. You see, what one thing I think is now clear, Michael, and that is, given the existence of the Brexit Party, no Tory Prime Minister could now risk calling an election until Brexit is resolved one way or the other. Uh, I entirely agree with that. But it's very interesting you say one way or the other. Um, so that opens up the possibility that there is um, no Brexit, that uh, I don't just mean an absence of Brexit, but that is, it is actually decided to revoke Article 50, which is clearly a possibility. Now, how exactly the Conservatives could deliver that and how they could live with it, I don't know. But I do think it's quite a strong possibility. But by one way or another, what I meant was that either they leave with a deal or no deal. Oh. Uh, and if it's delivered, then I, 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 surely the raison d'etre of the Brexit party ceases to exist. I, I find it very hard to see how we're going to exit 
with no deal. I, I understand that. And I find it very hard to see how we're going to exit with Mrs May's deal, since everybody is against Mrs May's deal. I'm not aware that anything else is on offer. There's a lot of flux in our politics. You, you mm. alluded to this, Stella, because you, you can see metropolitan Tories uh, drifting off to the Lib Dems, particularly in the South, more pro-Europe over Brexit. Perhaps the more suburban ones, those small-town Tories going to the Brexit party. Uh, in Labour, you can see uh, in the north some of the working-class Labour vote going to Brexit and in the south some of the more middle-class uh, uh, Labour vote going Lib Dem. We also, look, we saw, I think it's really important not to think it's a north-south thing. Certainly there were votes lost to the Liberal Democrats in the European elections by Labour in northern seats, places like... So they're Paris getting it both stuff. ways but across yeah. the country. Know, look, that's both parties are. That's a challenge for my political party. You know, make no bones about it. Look, if you stand in the middle of the road, you're not clear... Cause then you get run over. I think what people are reacting to is a sense that there are difficult choices and they want some sense of clarity. The irony for me is the one party that won't tell you what they want to do, which is the Brexit party, you know, won't publish a manifesto, won't say what they do on any of the key issues. But the only thing that the matters to them well is leaving... The, saying that they're doing but the only thing that matters to them is yeah. leaving a no deal. That's uh, it. Yeah. Now, now, how long they can keep that going, simply being their... Yeah. their I don't is, know. But, that's, but, it's, but it's clear, is it not, Anthony, that the parties at the moment, if you take a clear, we're leaving on no deal, mm. or if you're the Lib Dems, you take a clear, we want to remain, mm. we're Remainers, yep. you do well. You do, but we are going to come out, Andrew. We have to come out. The perils of not coming out. I was a Remainer, but I think we have to now come out. But this is the 21st century, and a lot of this discussion is about the 20th century. There are things happening. Global warming will be the huge thing. I run a university. I used to run schools. The young think differently about global warming, about their future. The AI revolution is going to be as big, as big a threat or bigger than global warming. These are issues that are going to reshape the nature of political parties. Well, well, let, well let me ask you this, okay. though, because, again, I can see that. I, I can see how Brexit's a real serious uh, problem for the Tories, which is why there won't be an, elect, an election, a voluntary election. Yeah, absolutely. But if you look at the striking feature of this Tory leadership contest so far is that bar Brexit, most of the candidates generally agree about what the direction of their party should be. They're nearly all reading from a one nation script. Mm -hmm. So if they could get Brexit out of the way, they may not be as divided as they currently look. Well, and here's one of the ironies. Do you agree with that? One of, yes, I do agree with that. Here's one of the ironies. We will come out on something pretty much like Mrs. May's deal. Sorry to say that, but I think that's going to happen. And the one nation direction for the party was the direction that Mrs. May took the party back into a pre-Thatcher era where there's a complete reconceptualization back to Disraeli, back to Baldwin in the 1930s about what the Tory party is. And if somebody has the nous to make that work... Well, they're all singing absorb, from that script. ..and can absorb the Green Revolution in a totally authentic way. Well, they're all for action on global warming too. Yeah, I it's know. It's Brexit I, I that divides them. It has, it ha yeah, but I think we're, we're going to get beyond that. You know, there will be a time where we're not. Well, uh, Anthony said that the Tories need a serious growing up. The front runner is Boris Johnson. Does he fill these shoes? Um, no. I've never, I've never thought he was a serious candidate. I mean, he's a serious candidate in, in the respect that he's uh, very likely to win, but I don't regard him as serious in any other respect. Who, in your view, would be a serious grown up Well, I think the field is extremely thin, to tell you the truth. Um, I mean, the, the There's only... more to come. I mean, don't you know? <laughs> you've not seen all the candidates yet. The Actually, we, the only, we the pretty only, much have now. The I only think, two who catch my, tougher rules. The only two who catch my eye are the two Scots, who are Michael Gove and Rory Stewart, for rather uh, different reasons. But I can't say that I'm at, at present wholly enthusiastic about either. But I'm, but I'm distinctly unenthusiastic about the front runner. As things stand at the moment, yeah. whose future is in greater doubt, the Labour Party or the Tory Party? Oh, I think all of us are, and I think that's right, because both of you. there are big challenges and both political parties, we have to get away from the era of this... So you're both, so you're both. Yeah, I think... I think as they would say in Edinburgh, your jacket's hanging by a sugarly peg. Apologies, I only know Glasgow, <laughs> so I don't know. But, yeah, we're well, all... Well, they say it in Glasgow too. Not to, yeah, it, it, they're all... 
we're all struggling, and I think that... You're struggling to understand me. (laughs) But I'm trying to be terribly polite about it. I think that's the Edinburgh way, isn't it? (laughs) Anthony. The party that will do best will be the party that recognises how utterly radical and fundamental the change needs to be. This is the 21st century politics. Very, very different world. As far as Boris goes, the Prime Minister doesn't run a department, and Boris's lack of grasp of detail could just work. Could just work. He could have that strategic so, mouse. So far, the parties that have tried to do what you're advocating have gone down in flames in the elections. <laughs> the, the Australian Labour Party was just gone down in flames. Yeah, but they but, left the Green parties in Ontario and Alberta smashed by uh, by Conservatives. So no one's Mr. Macron, who was yeah. doing the new thing, wow. paralysed by the Gilets Jaunes. You're writing a book. Have you got more advice like that for for them? <laughs> what's the What's the book about? Well, well, the next book is about about what happened with Mrs. May. Ah. And but I think change, you know, change is the way, Andrew. I I, I think change is, is the word. Uh, <laughs> even if change isn't the word. Yeah. Well. We're going to not leave that subject, but we have to leave you. Anthony, thanks for being with us. Thank Anthony Selden.